Grace and peace in the name of our risen Lord Jesus Christ on this third, sorry, third, sixth Sunday of Easter. We come together in his name to worship, to be instructed in the word, and to be inspired to serve in the world in his name and for his sake. Let us prepare our hearts and minds to worship as we sing, He is Lord.
A vision of a man from Macedonia came to Paul during the night. He stood urging Paul, come over to Macedonia and help us. Immediately after he saw the vision, we prepared to leave for the providence of Macedonia, concluding that God had called us to proclaim the good news to them. We sailed from Troas straight for Samothrace and came to Neapolis the following day. From there we went to Philippi, a city of Macedonia's first district, and a Roman colony. We stayed in that city several days. On the Sabbath, we went outside the city gate to the riverbank, where we thought there might be a place for prayer. We sat down and began to talk with the women who had gathered. One of those women was Lydia, a genteel God worshiper from the city of Tyatira, a dealer in purple cloth. As she listened, the Lord enabled her to embrace Paul's message. Once she and her household were baptized, she urged, Now that you have decided that I am a believer in the Lord, come and stay in my house. And she persuaded us. Join me in the unison prayer. You send us on a journey, O Christ. One thing. Oops. The grace and power of the Spirit. We are empowered to share good news. When hearts and lives are changed, we are blessed by the hospitality of brothers and sisters with whom we share life. For that and all other blessings, we offer thanks and praise. Amen. Now hear these words from John's Gospel, chapter 14, verses 23 to 29. I will be reading from the Common English Bible. Jesus answered, Whoever loves me will keep my word. My Father will love them, and we will come to them and make our home with them. Whoever doesn't love me doesn't keep my word. The word that you hear isn't mine, it is the word of the Father who sent me. I have spoken these things to you while I am with you. The companion, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and will remind you of everything I told you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. I give to you not as the world gives. Don't be troubled or afraid. You have heard me tell you, I'm going away and returning to you. If you loved me, you would be happy that I am going to the Father, because the Father is greater than me. I have told you before it happens, so that when it happens, you will believe. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Please be seated and we will sing, Walk With Me.
Let us pray. O oh God of endless love and possibilities, receive us as ones who seek to keep your word. Guide us to the people and places where we may affirm our love for you as we minister in your name through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. One of the things I learned during my time living and serving in Northwest Dayton is that communities have different ways of relating to one another. One of my first learnings was that the appropriate response to how are you is, I'm blessed. Now, I always thought the correct response was, I'm fine, even when I was not. And another phrase that I learned was, where do you stay? Rather than, where do you live? I was reminded of that as I read today's passage from Acts, which ends with Paul and his unnamed companion agreeing to stay with Lydia. She offers the invitation with the words, Now that you have decided I am a believer in the Lord, come and stay in my house. Contrast that with Jesus' words. My Father will love them, and we will come to them and make our home with them. Paul and his companion are on a missionary journey, invited by a vision asking them to come to Macedonia. Now, if you knew the whole story, Paul's journeys had mixed results. He was often chased out of town. He seemed to have differences with his traveling companions, one of whom deserted him. Staying with Lydia was temporary, just as staying anywhere is often temporary for people who live in poverty or with limited incomes. I had a parishioner who told me his family moved often because his mother was their sole support. But none of their landlords were upset with them because they always left the place better and cleaner and better shape than when they arrived. We're not always sure that Paul left things in better condition than when he arrived, but we can hope. Jesus' words offer a permanent relationship between those who keep his word and God. Now, making a home is more than finding a furnish or furnishing a house and apartment. It involves making decisions about daily chores, whether or not to put the cap back on the toothpaste or leave the toilet seat up or down, where dishes and utensils belong, and, and how often the bed will be made, and when it is time for the television set to be turned off for the night. Making a home requires the intimacy of sharing space, activities, resources, emotions, dreams, and opportunities. You know, when we stay with someone, we tend to put up with inconveniences or differences, knowing it's not forever. But when we make a home, these issues continue to nag us unless we agree on procedures. And I am convinced that, as in human homes, mutual love between God and believers is the essential quality, the primary factor in whether or not we can make a home together. And that takes us right back to Jesus' announcement, whoever loves me, keeps my word. Now, how we keep Jesus' word will in remove the if from whether or not we love Jesus. Now, as a word nerd, when I, even though I was sure I knew what keep meant, it's always a good idea to check the dictionary. I discovered that the word keep may be a transitive or an intransitive verb as well as a noun. Now, leaving the noun out of it 
since Jesus was using keep as a verb, the Oxford English Dictionary had 32 possible meanings and equal no, and, and explanations. And then the Merriam-Webster Dictionary had an equal number of options. Now, the good news is that many of the options are similar, but with just some nuances. But it did make me wonder, how many ways are open to us to keep Jesus' word? You know, one of the ways we are accustomed to keeping things is to grab hold for dear life and not let them go. We keep mementos. Uh, we keep clothes that we've outgrown or grown tired of wearing. We keep tools and utensils that we haven't used for years. But we might need them someday, right, Dave? Right. We keep things we treasure. We keep things we believe will be useful. We keep things we don't know what to do with. And we keep things that no longer mean what they meant. And sometimes we keep things just to make sure no one else can have them. I've heard that happens, but I could be wrong. So certainly keeping Jesus' word is not losing it, not forgetting it exists. But so many times through the process of translation, through changes in language and culture through the years, keeping requires at least some interpretation. You know, a Jewish man came to talk to his Sunday school class, and he noted that the very first word in Genesis, in its original Hebrew, has multiple meanings. So as we work to hold on to Jesus' word, there will be occasions when we might not all agree on the word we are keeping. You know, sometimes keep means to preserve. But anyone who has preserved food knows that keeping food often requires a process to protect the flavor and consistency or perhaps even to change it through cooking in order to keep it safe and useful. Sometimes to keep something, we must watch over or defend it. We attempt to keep our children from dangerous situations, which is fine so long as we don't become helicopter parents hovering so much that our children fail to learn the personal safety and decision-making process. Now, just as on Pentecost, when people heard the good news in their own languages, we may need to keep Jesus' word fresh and meaningful by new ways of speaking. When we think of Jesus, keeping Jesus' word, we are more likely to think of having appropriate conduct as in keeping the law conforming to habits or conduct, staying in accord with the word. Whoever loves me keeps my word. We keep that word through obedience to Jesus' teachings. We keep that word by preserving it, tending to it as we would tend a garden, keeping the word from harm, maintaining a relationship. And when we keep Jesus' word, we show our love for God. Uh, wait. If we're going to keep Jesus' word, we need to know what that word is. Now, in a chorus, many people have sung, maybe some of you have heard it. We hear the gospel in a word is love. Love your neighbor as a sister, a brother, a mother, or a father. Paul and his companion kept Jesus' word by going places, seeking an opportunity to speak with others. They chose places of worship and prayer, 
synagogues or less formal settings, even public squares at times. Paul kept Jesus' word by sharing it with others, inviting them to become believers in the Lord. John Wesley also kept Jesus' word by going to places and people who were already baptized, perhaps, but perhaps not yet, what he calls altogether Christians. In his own life, he was doing the right things, but it wasn't until his heart was strangely warmed at a prayer meeting held in Aldersgate Street that he truly believed in the Lord. By the way, this is Aldersgate Sunday for Methodists around the world, where we recognize both Charles and, and John had this profound experience, a personal experience of God's love, one on the uh, 21st and one on the 24th. So here we are on the 22nd. It's Aldersgate Sunday. Maybe there will be some warmed hearts here today. You know, for some of us participating in the walk to Emmaus or some other retreat leads to believe in the Lord, to take the steps that Lydia did from being a God worshiper to becoming one who believes in the Lord. When we truly embrace Christ as our Lord, we begin to see ourselves and the world in a new way. We feel God's love surrounding us, supporting us, accepting us, challenging us, inspiring us in ways we had never imagined. If we thought of ourselves as timid or unworthy, we are made bold. We take on tasks and responsibilities willingly, maybe even eagerly, and we learn new ways of being used for holy purposes. Confident in God making a home with us, we radiate joy and live in peace, even when chaos surrounds us. We also see the world through Christ's eyes. We see the pain of people who are grieving and the anxiety of parents unable to provide for their children. We see the anger of some that threatens the safety of others. We see despair, fear, frustration, loneliness, and longing. And we respond. We speak love in words and acts of compassion with gentleness that respects privacy and dignity. We offer wisdom and opportunity when appropriate, and yes, we might reprimand when tough love is needed. We do all the things we are accustomed to doing to support our families and friends, but our world expands to treat all others with that same love. We see, and our love for Christ propels us to keep his word. We see. Did I mention that the origin of our word keep is Old English for keepen, which is akin to the old high German word chapen, which means to look. Paul and his companions went looking for those whose hearts were open to hearing the good news. Unlike Paul, John Wesley got thrown out of a number of churches and public areas, but continued to look for any who were eager to have their hearts strangely warmed. We look and we'll see the next opportunities for us to keep Jesus' word. Whether it is through acts of justice or mercy, through the healing powers of listening and responding, to feeding, clothing, or supplying basic needs, through tutoring or babysitting or providing transportation. When we look, 
we will be amazed at the ways in which we are invited, encouraged, engaged in keeping Jesus' word. Now, we will not let our golden moments pass us by, but we will say we love you to Jesus by all that we say and all that we do. Whoever loves me will keep my word. My Father will love them, and we will come down to them and make our home with them. The peace of Christ will be with us, not simply to stay for a while, but to live with us forever when we keep Christ's word. And that word is love. Amen. Amen. 
I want to say thanks once again to our worship leader, Harold Fullaway, to our tech team, our musicians, and all who serve in this place. Thanks as well to all whose prayers, tithes, and offerings support our ministry. I want to, uh, the flowers on the altar are from Rosetta Schaffner's service yesterday. I want to thank all of you who participated in making the Schaffner family uh, welcome in our place and offering them hospitality and food. Let's remember that COVID is still out there and take precautions as needed. Um, the Fairview United Methodist Church has got it going crazy there. So it's, it's around. Um, while fewer people are being hospitalized at this time, many lives are still being affected in the short or long term. I want to also remember those persons whose lives are affected by wars and violence throughout the world, including Buffalo, New York, and other places where lives have been lost to hate. I also want to let you know that Grace United Methodist Church in Coshocton, Ohio, burned Friday morning. So let's keep that kind, our brothers and sisters in prayer as they grieve and discern a new future. So let us pray together for God's precious people and all of creation. God of love, who makes your home with all who keep your word, hear our prayers as we share our lives with you. We pray for all who are suffering this day, for those whose bodies, minds, or spirits are filled with pain, for those who are weary for any who are grieving, and for all who are in need, as we name them before you with our hearts and our voices. God of all mercy, hear our prayers. We pray for all who are in danger, for those who are in the path of storms, floods, fires, or other natural disasters, for any who are living in places of violence or oppression, for those whose choices or behaviors place them and those who care for them in dangerous situations and for those who lack safe water, shelter, or food, or who have limited access to health care, education, or training. God of all mercy, hear our prayers. Hear our prayers for creation and for all that relies upon it for life. We pray for endangered species, 
for the renewal of air, land, and water, for the protection and wise use of the gifts that sustain and enrich life. God of all mercy, hear our prayers. We pray for human institutions, systems, and leaders, for all who are elected, appointed, or employed to care for our common well-being. We pray for those who have seized power for self-centered goals, that they might work for good and not for evil. We pray for health care, educational, and justice systems. that They might work with integrity and humility to provide what is needed for all people. We pray for governments to consider the welfare of the most vulnerable as they make decisions that affect us all. We pray for voices who speak truth to power. And we pray for citizens to live responsibly and act kindly toward neighbors and seek good will toward all. God of all mercy, hear our prayers. We pray for the followers of Jesus, those who keep his word in their lives. We pray for Bishop Palmer, Superintendent Roper, Reverend Jim Wilson, and all who lead your people. We pray for all who offer hope and healing in the name of Jesus, that they might be filled with grace and peace. And we pray for the people, mission, and ministry of this congregation and for the communities in which we live and serve. God of all mercy, hear our prayers. We pray in the communion of the saints using the words Jesus taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Let us join in singing, Lord, dismiss us with thy blessing, found at number 671 in the United Methodist Hymnal. <laughs>